Recently, I got a call from a homeowner who wanted to know how much a developer would pay for their house. So here in Vancouver, many of the large development sites are on a lot or more often multiple lots whose current use is single family homes. And we've all heard stories of that friend of a friend who in the 1980s bought a house for $100,000 and recently sold it to, to a developer for six million bucks. And there's a tendency for people to think that developers have deep pockets and will just throw lots of money at sites. But I can tell you that that's not how it works. There's a very careful analysis that goes into determining the value of a development site. There's four main methods of real estate valuation. Most people who have bought and sold homes are primarily familiar with one of the methods. That's the market comparison approach. So it's a method of valuation where the evidence derived from the analysis of sales or leasing of similar assets is used to demonstrate value. I'll give an example. We're all familiar with it. Jim's house is next door, same size lot. House is in the same age, same condition. Jim just sold for a million bucks. So my house must also be worth a million bucks. Or sometimes there's an adjustment. So Ted just sold for $950,000. Our lot's a bit bigger and it's on the corner. And Ted's house is kind of falling apart. Ours is worth $50,000 more. Usually you have a few examples to support your, your case, but that's how most residential buyers and sellers look at that. Developers work off a very different method of valuation called the residual land method evaluation and, and incorporate some of the other methods when you're determining assumptions. But uh, there's many variables in the analysis and they can be broken down into a simple equation, which is you take your projected revenue, you subtract your cost, you work in a profit margin, which is usually the minimum profit margin that a lender would require to lend on the property. And whatever's left over is the land value. That's why it's called a land residual, because the land value is what's left after the revenue and costs and profit are accounted for. So this number is actually quite volatile. It fluctuates based on revenue and costs. For example, what a developer may have paid for your property a few months ago may be vastly different from what they paid today, even if home prices haven't changed so drastically. And this could be due to changes in costs. For example, materials and labor have been going through the roof recently, uh, rising interest rates that makes it more expensive to borrow money for land loans and construction loans. And there's so many factors that play into it. So how do you determine your revenue? Well, you have to figure out what can be built based on policy and site constraints and then you see which would yield the highest profit margin based on what the market would pay for the finished product. Funnily enough, that it's not always through maximizing the density. So you have to figure out costs and efficiencies. You can see that there's a tremendous amount of factors that go into this and developers may work their numbers slightly differently based on some different assumptions, but at the end of the day, the same process of a careful land residual analysis will be performed. Are there developers that don't do a careful analysis? Yeah, there are, but from experience, more often than not, uh, those developers don't stay in the business for very long. As Warren Buffett says, when the tide goes out, you find out who's swimming naked. If you're curious about the development potential of your property, the development process, or the value of your property as a development site, you can reach out and I will gladly analyze the site and give you feedback.